Okay, so uh, I'm uh, talking from the hip again, uh, and I'm talking about the uh, Woman King, the film, The Woman King. Uh, this is classic, classic uh, African American BS, and also Hollywood. I want you to imagine, before I go into this, I want you to imagine for one moment Hollywood, and it's not going to happen. And we know why it would never happen. Yeah, we know why this particular scenario would never, ever happen. But I want you to imagine somebody, uh, let's say uh, England, coming up with a film about Adolf Eichmann rescuing the Jews. Yeah, think about that. Adolf Eichmann rescuing the Jews from the Holocaust. Yeah, okay. It's not going to happen, is it? It's just not going to happen. But here we go, yeah? We have the woman king. Now, what would Kevin Samuels say about that? Yeah, that use of a masculine term. And it's quite befitting, if you like, with the stereotype of a black woman being masculine. We don't call her a queen. We're calling her a king. But hey... Let's not get wokeism into it and make it a bit of transgender and mixed up, yeah? Then we've got the situation of Viola Davis, yeah? Taking the king's shilling, as we say in the UK, yeah? Taking the king's shilling. What's the king's shilling? King's shillings were back in the day when you tried to get recruit soldiers about 300 years ago. People weren't really willing. So what you'd do is you'd put in the king's shilling in their pint glass in the pubs and when they drunk the beer, okay, they would see a king's shilling in it, and the recruiter would say, you have accepted that beer on behalf of the king, therefore you are now enrolled in the Royal Navy. Okay? And so we got to the stage whereby when you've got a tank card, yeah, uh, the uh, landlord, publican, would only give you, or you'd only request a tank card, which will see through, so you could actually see whether or not there was a king's shilling in it. But hey, Viola Davis just takes it. Because at the end of the day, it's about money. She doesn't give a damn, a damn about black culture. She doesn't give a damn about historical stuff, okay? All she cares about is money in her pocket. And then she's got the audacity, the audacity to try to promote her movie and, and under the guise of race baiting to say, you're not really black enough. You wouldn't watch this movie. It's an absolute scandal. Absolute scandal. The King of Dahomey, okay, as we all know, but let's give it this direct reference. One moment, please. Okay, so. We. So, if you want to go to the actual source, okay, if you are uh, open minded enough to go to the actual source, what you need to do is to buy the book of the first hand account of Dahomey and the Dahomeans, volume two of two, being the journals of two missions to the king of Dahomey and the residents of his capital in the years 1849 to 1850, okay? And that is an account by Frederick Forbes, who was a Royal Naval officer, okay, uh, of the United Kingdom, observing the events of the king of Dahomey, okay, during his slave raids, okay? There was lots of slave raids which were going on, okay, in West Africa, okay, in that region of the Homey, right, uh, whereby that kingdom was participating in the slave trade, big time. The difficulties were thus. The Brazilians hadn't given up the slave trade at that moment in time. Britain had already given it up about 20 years previous, okay, and America had also sort of given it up, okay, and what was happening was that Brazil was hoovering up as much as it could, as many slaves as possible, okay? But the British, the British was uh, carrying out an operation with the Royal Navy to prevent the slave trade, yeah? The British were looking to prevent the slave trade, okay? And so what they were doing was sending ships and naval ships to deter any ships in that area, okay, to... Uh, uh, sort of send slaves over to Brazil, okay? And the king of the home, uh, Guzo, uh, his name was, okay, was virulently against this. 
And that book, what I mentioned, and I repeat it again, okay, which is the Dahomey and the Dahomeans, volume two of two, uh, being uh, the journals of two missions to the king of Dahomey and the residents of his capital in the years 1849 to 1850, okay? Uh, the naval, the, the British naval attaché, if you like, went there to try and persuade the king to detest from that slave trading. Now, as a part of his armies, okay, he had women soldiers, okay, and these women soldiers, okay, uh, who were nowhere near the Amazons, which this film was trying to portray, okay, were part of uh, uh, the, the, the slave race to capture, okay, unsuspecting innocent uh, people to ship them off over to Brazil, okay. Uh, and this is the Amazons, which they're portraying as great warriors, etc. Total about uh, volta face of what was actually happening in history. And it's sad, because most people don't have time to read a history book. Most people, they're still going around with their slave names. Most Americans, most West Indians, are still walking around with their slave names, right? So they don't even have time to read a book to enlighten themselves as to what was going on and why they are black in that particular situation. As uh, uh, Malcolm X used to say, you know, you don't get many Chinese men called uh, Chinese men called Mr. Smith, do you? Yeah, you don't get many Chinese men called Mr. Smith. If you met a Chinese man with Mr. Smith, okay, you'd be wanting to know what his story was. But hey, call a black man Mr. Williams, Fitzgerald, or... Uh, I don't know, McDonald, okay? You don't even think twice about it. You just say, right, is that your name? Just write it down, okay? And unfortunately, in America and in the UK and in the Caribbean, there was not too much looking under the bonnet as to what was actually happening, okay? Fact one about the slave trade, the West African slave trade. And trust me, I've been to Jamaica, I've been to uh, uh, Ghana, West Africa, Okay, but back one, which you really need to appreciate is that the level of disease, okay, in West Africa at that point, when there were no inoculations against it, okay, was extremely dangerous for white people to go over there. Okay, so they wouldn't step, they wouldn't step off the boat. Yeah, they wouldn't even step off the boat. If they would step off the boat, it'd be in a certain area, like the coastal regions. Cape Coast Castle, for example. There are lots of castles along that area. Okay, you can see El Nina Castle is famous, of course. Cape Coast Castle, which I know quite intimately. Okay, and other lots of castles dotted along on the coast. If you were a white person, I've been to the graveyards of these people who actually came over. It's quite interesting. Okay, but they didn't step out of those small sort of enclaves. Okay, because they would be subject to disease and they would die instantly. Their uh, uh, lifespan, okay, was very, very short. I've seen that. I've been to the grave graveyards, okay, of, of these uh, people in Cape Coast. If you go to Cape Coast, uh, you will see the graveyards of the colonies, and you'll see the uh, the average life expectancy is, is, is literally is less than 40, okay? Uh, so where you know, so how do they manage to amass so many people, so many slaves, yeah? They got them from the African kingdoms, the African kingdoms. Okay, now you check out, I'm sorry, no names, no petrol, but I'm going to have to identify you, okay? Uh, from what I know, for example, in Ghana, the Fante were instrumental, yeah? Instrumental in uh, transporting those slaves, uh, slaves from the coast to the ships. The Fante, because they're all, they're all around the coastal regions, okay? The Ashante, or, uh, who are a bit more inward, okay? Slightly different, but they're participating in giving and supplying slaves and slave labour for cash, for cash. And then you've got Hollywood making a film trying to glamorise women. I mean, this is how, you know, this is how screwed up it is. Seriously, this is how screwed up it is. And what really, really hurts me as a black person is that some black woman would not only take the king's shilling, okay, and try and transform it, as I said to you before, like uh, Rudolf Hess or um, uh, uh, Heinrich Himmler, for example. Uh, you know, Heinrich Himmler is the, the, the hero of the Holocaust who sort of you know, saved many Jews. He could have killed more Jews uh, had he not uh, put a halt on it, 
prior to the uh, end of the war, such a saviour. Could you imagine the outcry of that? But no, 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 no. We're not going to do something like that. What we're going to do is we're going to do it for the stupid black folk who don't even bother to read their bloody history and don't know themselves, okay? And, and we're going to totally re-ramp and, and change history around, turn it around, and turn these so-called Amazons, who were absolutely lousy soldiers, who died in the hundreds, vis-a-vis -vis the French, okay, who lost very few, I think it was about six or ten uh, French soldiers who died, vis-a-vis -vis the hundreds of so-called Amazonian warriors, okay, because in, if you read the book, okay, it, it, it even said that the person who was looking at one of the parades which the king was given, the, the guy suspected that actually uh, it was the same women who were walking around in a circle, okay, to give them the appearance that there were many, many, many of them, okay? Uh, but what, what really angers me is this whole idea that you'll get a black person, okay, taking that type of role and completely changing history. There are not many, many uh, events which black people will see about history, especially about Africa. If you go to Cape Coast Castle, you'll see a stone etched where the uh, uh, tribal chiefs and, and, and kings and kingdoms have put in Cape Coast Castle an apology, an apology for their participation in the slave trade, okay? Because African leaders, African kingdoms were instrumental in the supply of the slave trade. Now, there are reasons if you like, in regards to that, because uh, a lot of the slaves were either people who were in debt, like, you know, British done to the Australians, you know, if you steal a loaf of bread, off you go, Australia. We need to populate these places, okay? In African culture, if you were a debtor, okay, you could become a slave. Uh, likewise, uh, if you were taken prisoner, you would be a slave. Slavery in Africa, Africa was much more different than what it was in America, okay? In America uh, and in Britain to a great degree, it was more of commoditization and industrialization. Whereas in, in, in Africa, you know, you, you could be a slave, a slave could be a prime minister, for example. Okay. Uh, I won't get into that. If you're looking at the Yoruba culture, uh, you will see that. You, just, uh, you see the, uh, the history of the Yorubas, which is a different uh, subject. You know, you've got people like uh, Tipo Tib, yeah, in West uh, East Africa. Okay, who was a major, major slave trader, major slave trader. Okay, we really got to sort of wake up, wake up to about what is going on about our own culture. Okay, about our own culture and how it's now, you know, how it's narrated. You know, if you wanted to make a film, Hollywood, if you really wanted to make a film, I would choose to do the Woman's War of uh, Abba. Okay, in 1929 in Africa, where the women of the Ibu tribe. Okay, rose up against the British authority because uh, they felt that they were being treated unfairly with not only with the taxes but also because of the indirect rule and the British didn't understand uh, uh, Ibu culture. Okay, because there were very few people on the ground, and so we were starting giving certain uh, people uh, uh, authority who they thought they should have been chiefs or kings when they were nowhere near. Okay, and these people were going around knowing that they shouldn't have been kings, okay, lording it, and they were not sort of favored by uh, uh, people. They were viewed as collaborators. And the, the women's war in Abba, okay, uh, in 1929, was a major kickback, okay, and a, 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 a major fight, okay. Uh, when I say a major fight, it was a massive, a bit of a rebellion where uh, a number of women actually got killed, okay. But they got killed standing up for their rights and they showed proper courage where their men did not show courage in regards to the way they were treated under the indirect rule of the, uh, the, the British Empire. OK, now that to me would have made a greater and better story than the falsifications of this uh, woman king. God knows what Kevin Samuels would have thought of a film like that. Yeah, Kevin Samuels. I could just imagine him speaking about a film which classifies a woman in a masculine tone, okay, uh, and, and just absolutely crapping on their ancestry history. Yeah, you, you know, Viola Davis, you took that money. You That money was more important to you than the history, okay, 
of your own people. That that is the difference, if you like, between if you like someone like uh, Queen Elizabeth the, the second who recently passed, okay, who took her duty more than pure riches. And I mean that. I mean that in the great sincerity. Okay. By all means, if you want to watch absolute shite, okay, go and watch The Woman King. But if you are black, and that's another thing that, that Viola Davis said, you know, you, you've got to watch this film because it's got dark skinned women in it. What? I can't believe the nonsense which is going down. The nonsense where you would even, even explain something like that. It's, just, it's, just, it's, it's mind boggling, okay? Jesus, you know, talk about sellouts. Unbelievable. Unbelievable that you would try and promote a film based on the idea that it's got strong women in it and they have to be dark skinned. Yeah. Not, you know, nothing to do with the fact that it's complete, absolutely a, a reverse of history and the facts what had actually happened. And then scantily say, oh, based on historical events. Based on historical events. Jesus Christ. Listen. That's me, over and out.